I, I want to bring in um, uh, Mark Short, uh, who is uh, the senior advisor to Mike Pence, in just a second, because we are in the midst of a presidential election. And Donald Trump is leading the polls by a wide margin. Uh, the former vice president's name or the office of the vice presidency is mentioned some 100 times in this indictment. And yesterday we heard from the former vice president and he gave one of his strongest criticisms yet of Mr. Trump during a campaign stop in Indianapolis. Let's listen. I want the American people to know that I had no right to overturn the election. And then on that day, President Trump asked me to put him over the Constitution. But I chose the Constitution, and I always will. Sadly, the president was surrounded by a group of crackpot lawyers that kept telling him what his itching ears wanted to hear. And while I made my case to him of what I understood my oath of the Constitution to require uh, the president ultimately, uh, ultimately, you know, continued to demand uh, that I choose him over the Constitution. Our country is more important than any one man. Our Constitution is more important than any one man's career. Joining us now is Mark Short, senior advisor for former Vice President Pence. Mark, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and good to see you. Um, Mark, what's your understanding of how many notes uh, the former Vice President had and was able to provide to the special counsel? Nora, thanks for having me. I think, as you can imagine, uh, the vice president of the United States is a demanding role, where a lot of information flows in on a lot of different things, from national security issues to leading the COVID task force to handling legislation. And so it was his tendency to keep uh, contemporaneous notes. Uh, but I don't I think that the the vast majority of those are things that honestly were reflected in his book. I think that the chapters that, go back to the events surrounding January 6th, uh, leaned heavily on those notes. And so I'm not sure there was so much new in the indictment that hadn't already been shared with the American people. Did the former vice president know, and did he also believe that Donald Trump knew that he lost the election? I, I don't know that uh, Donald Trump ever said to the vice president, or certainly when I was in their surroundings, that he felt he had lost that election. Um, I don't know, honestly, Nora, to the extent to which the president's actions are necessarily were criminal. I do know they were wrong, and I do know that he violated his oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I do know he asked the vice president very specifically to violate his oath to the Constitution. And I think that, you know, at this point, the prosecution probably has plenty of witnesses from the campaign who testified they informed the president that he had lost, that any evidence of fraud was insignificant and would not have changed any of the results. I think you probably have uh, other witnesses that have testified that from the legal counsel in the White House, they informed the president that the vice president had no such authority. And, you know, one person that I think is uh, certainly not mentioned in the indictment, but was in many cases the ringleader, the organization of this in the White House is Mark Meadows. And so I certainly believe he probably has testified extensively as well about the president's um, thoughts and what the president knew at this point. And so I, I don't know, again, to what extent uh, these actions will, will bear out to be criminal, but I, I do know that they're wrong, and I do know that the vice president upheld his oath that day. I know the vice president has spoke to this in the past, but I want to ask you today, would he be willing to testify against Donald Trump at a trial? Well, I, I don't know about answering that hypothetical now, nor I think that the, much about the dynamics between the president and the vice president played out very publicly. It seems that much of the uncertain part of this is the conspiracy as to, as to what he knew and didn't know. And, and whether or not the vice president's called uh, to testify, I think you know he always has followed the law and so would, would presumably do so in this case, but, uh, but no indication of that at this point. We talked about earlier some of the phone calls and the contemporaneous notes that Mike Pence has provided to the special counsel, including from a phone call on New Year's Day, where Donald Trump berated Mike Pence, asking him to overturn the election. And Mike Pence replied he didn't have the authority to return or reject f votes. And Trump told him, you're too honest. Uh, Nancy Cordes has provided us with a picture of the merch that your campaign is now uh, selling that says, Too Honest on T-shirts and hats. How is that merch selling? 
Well, Nora, I think that in the last couple of days, the vice president has received an enormous amount of uh, support and thousands of additional uh, donations. And I think that, um, you know, I think what's fundamentally to your question is something important about, you know, overturning versus uh, sending it back, because I think that that is part of the, that's the narrative that's been out there by the president's lawyers about just sending it back. I think it's important for your viewers to know that the request all along was for the vice president simply to reject state selectors. It was to overturn the election. In fact, Donald Trump even said so prior to the former vice president's speech to the Federalist Society a couple years ago that he'd asked the vice president to overturn the election. I think in later time, they believed the PR of saying simply send it back to the state sounded better. Um, and that was something that they turned to in the last 36 hours. And there's even notes from John McEntee in the White House saying, since Pence won't go along with the overturn election, let's pivot to this theory. And that theory really is one that has the same ultimate end, because the notion was, was if somehow something could be returned, which the vice president doesn't have that authority and no vice president 250 years has, nor do Republicans want Kamala Harris to have that authority. But hypothetically, if it did, the idea was you get below the 270 threshold in electoral college and it returns to the House of Representatives to get a different result on the mm -hmm. election. And so it sounds nicer, but ultimately the impact would have been the same. Mark Short, uh, senior advisor to Vice President Mike Pence's former chief of staff. Um, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Nora, thanks for having me.